All right, so in this video, we're going to be making the lead arpeggiator sound, the main melody of Eugenio Tokarev's Melifluo. Here's what it sounds like. All right, you get it. So we're gonna jump into Ableton and this is exactly what we're gonna be making by the end of it. Yeah, pretty, pretty accurate, I hope. So we're gonna be starting over and making this from scratch. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll start a new MIDI track to start over from the beginning and plug in a little Silenth synthesizer here. And then we're going to want to initialize the preset by on Mac pressing Command J. The MIDI, why don't I go ahead and give you a picture of what the MIDI is going to be. Just by copy and pasting. And so this is what we're playing with right here. Okay, so I, I guess I can, if that's too cumbersome to draw in yourself, I can include a MIDI file for you in the description. But let's get started making this thing. First, let's turn up the voices to eight on each and set this to a saw wave and turn off the phase retriggering and we'll bump up the detune on the both of these oscillators. The first one we'll do maybe to about this mark, 4.2-ish, and the other to maybe 4.8-ish. Uh, that should be good. Now that's sounding like this. Yeah, that's like when it opens up pretty much. Now we'll also enable the filter here and we're going to make the cutoff be both oscillators part A and B. And we're gonna turn this cutoff knob to six-ish and we're gonna crank up the resonance a bit, maybe 2.9-ish is probably good. And then we're gonna crank up some drive to give it a little meat, a little warm low end. That right there is pretty good. On the filter control area, we're gonna change the cutoff value. I'm just gonna start it at 3.425 or thereabouts. 4.22, that's good enough for me. Then we'll go here to the mod envelope one, cut off A and B, set it to that, bring down the sustain all the way, bump up the decay to 2.3-ish, 2.4-ish, yeah. Mouse work. There. <laughs> there we go. 2.39. And for the release, we'll set it to 5.6 or thereabouts, wherever the mouse wants to end today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. And of course, we need to uh, bump up the amount here. So let's jump it up to like, yeah, that's good. 2.819. Finally, the amp envelope, we're going to bring down the sustain all the way again. And we'll bump up the decay to like 4.8-ish, 4.845. Cool. So now that sounds like this. Ooh, that's getting close. You know what I could use though? Some noise. So let's go to part B and we will turn this one, this oscillator B1 to a noise oscillator. We'll leave the voices, we'll obviously set the voices to one so we can actually hear anything. Leave the retrigger on and we'll bring this way down way down further, maybe to like here. Yeah, that's good. So now it'll sound like Zeus. 
but we don't want that noise to be playing the whole time because the filter is doing the cutoff thing. That is going to be fed into the part A filter, so we don't want to have this going when that's the filter's down. So what we're going to do is just bring down the mix B, uh, not fader, <laughs> all the way down. So now it sounds like this. And when we bump up the filter control, we have that noise oscillator by solo part A. It's a very small difference. But you don't want it to overpower just enough to be a little added brightness. Did I do too much? Yeah, that's fine. Cool. So let's bring this back down to where it was. 3.4 or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so that's really the bulk of the sound. I mean, if we go back to the the example here, and I had it, if we set it to around the same cutoff. Oops, so actually something is not quite correct, <laughs> as you can hear immediately, and we'll, we're going to change that right now. Here's the one that we just made. Here's the other. Yeah, there's an octave difference. So uh, in this first, or the, the, the one that we're making from scratch here, let's go in, and for oscillator two, we'll jump it up an octave. Now, I need to bring the value down. Yeah, so it's practically the same thing. From there, you could honestly just do whatever you wanted to it. You could mix it however you want. You could add a little reverb. So let's go, I use the R4 reverb on a return track, and I use a Ableton chorus going into it and a little EQ to touch it up. So let's just bump it in there a little bit. And of course, turn that off. Of course, we want to have the, the channel on. Yeah, that's nice. Now you could take this a little bit further by doing some mixing and cool stuff. So uh, one thing you might want to do is add some delay. So the Echo Boy Junior is my favorite because Echo Boy is cool, but I hate the interface. Uh, so let's just change it to ping pong. Got the delay on there. That's nice. And next you would probably want to do is like EQ and compress it, so I would use this guy, the Fab Filter Pro Q3 EQ, very nice one. And uh, well, what would you want to do? You'd want to roll off the lows a little bit to fit it in the mix, All right? So like that or so. And obviously, you know, when you're doing EQ and compression and stuff, you want to be listening to it in the mix, so you're not. Like, if you don't, and you just do it like we're doing it right here, you can tend to really overdo some of the decisions that you make and make it sound kind of ugly and thin. But um, just for the sake of this tutorial, you know, let's do it this way, okay? Because I don't have the whole song to give you uh, the whole mix of Melifluo. So what else could this use? It could use probably a little, a little bit of a cut in this region-ish. Let's hear. Yeah, it takes out a little bit of that mid-range. Which again, in the mix, you might want. But if I go back and listen to that song, I remember it sounding a bit... Yeah, maybe it's a bit much. That's really good. A 3K boost would probably be nice. 3K-ish. Add some bright or whatever. Uh, let's also bump up all the way this guy. So we can really hear what's going on when it's at its fullest. Yeah. Yeah. Probably roll off a 
bit here because we don't need that stuff. You don't need that, right? But what happens when we add this this boost here? I don't know if you can hear it, but there is a little bit of like some harshness being created from that. So, how best to get rid of it, but to just find it. Uh-huh. Yeah, see the difference there? Get both of these off. You can still hear a little bit of that ringing, but when we accentuate this, this boost, it really accentuates that ringing, so we just dial that part back a bit. Maybe even a bit more. Yeah, all right? And so, I do hear a bit more. Like maybe right there. that makes sense the whole finding bad frequencies thing is can be a little bit esoteric at times um and subjective but you know you know do your do your best um and make smart decisions in the mix again those might be very worth having in the mix you never know finally i do think that there's some offending freaks going on in like the four or five hundred region yeah like right here when that section starts to pop up so i can just pull that back a bit oh that was a lot <laughs> You don't really notice a huge difference when that one section is not playing, but we'll flip it down on and off when it comes, which is right here. Yeah, and so that was a bit much. That amount is probably good. Maybe even a bit less. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you know, in mix, that might be a bad decision right here. It kind of, those frequencies kind of poked out a bit too much for my ears. So next, you'd probably want to compress. I usually like to use Fab Filter Pro C, but this thing works just fine in RMS mode. Crank the ratio all the way up. Bring this down maybe like here-ish. Release all the way to zero. Um, having it in RMS mode means that you retain a bit more of the peaks that are coming through and you don't, you can do this fast release and not have it like super distort the sound. So but there's a problem, which is when you have it, so it's playing like this and you'll have it compressing that much, but when you pull the filter down, Your compression is a lot, it, it's, it's less consistent. Or, you know, there's a difference from uh, 
when the filter's all the way open. So EQ, bump, and maybe like here-ish is probably good. So that we're not, basically that means that we're, this is the signal that's coming through. That's what's being, um, compression is only being applied to frequencies in this range, as opposed to this range, because these guys will totally jam this guy all out and make it work a lot differently. Which is really a big deal when you get it like down here too. Um, but yeah, so. Incorrectly using this term, it just adds a bit of glue to having the compressor on. Sounds better, in my <laughs> subjective opinion. I think other than that, if you wanted to like catch some peaks for mixing purposes, yeah, I would just throw on like a saturator because the limiter kind of... Um, really messes with the sound a bit too much for me for my taste so i would map both of these guys to a single macro knob set uh both of these to zero and turn this one all the way down so that when you turn the macro knob up you're getting an equal uh, reduction in gain for any drive that you add to it so it basically stays the same level the whole time that allows you to catch the peaks in this such way See the peaks coming down. It's useful for when you're mixing. With not a huge uh, difference made to the sound. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Let's listen to that other guy again. That's it. I mean, what more could you want? Maybe I think he had a bit crazier of a delay, maybe even a couple delays going on. And uh, overall, kind of more compressed. So what you could do, I guess, I like to use uh, OTT for that purpose, which I would put before the saturator. Um, and I call this the San Holo version because I got it, I just copied it from one of his videos where he's using his own OTT and I think it sounds nice. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that made a noticeable difference for sure. You could also use the plugin that uh, Xfer made for OTT, but for Ableton, I just used that because it's a hell of a lot simpler. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that he had a bit more reverb coming through on his actual song. But that's it. I hope that all makes sense and my descriptions of it was uh, not too fast or confusing or anything. I suppose um, people sometimes ask or comment on videos like, you know, I did all the things but I don't understand what's really going on. Well, what did we do here? Uh, this is the section for those of you who are don't know a damn thing about synthesis, but um, would like to know more other than just copying exactly what somebody did in a tutorial. Well, when you take, so I mean, obviously detuning makes the sound sound different than than that. It, you know, it's, it basically tunes out uh, the voices and spreads them 
because we have the stereo pan all the way on there. Um, so that I feel like is pretty easy to understand. Maybe um, the whole filter stuff is a little, little bit more complicated. So filters, uh, when you have a filter all the way down, let's turn this off for now. Obviously we're talking about a uh, low pass filter meaning everything beneath whatever frequency this is, is going to come through. Everything above will not. So the cutoff's like right here. All this stuff is sloped off. And when we add an envelope to that, and we have that envelope modulate the cutoff point, you get that. And that changes based on how fast you set this or slow. I did that in the opposite direction of what I said. Okay, so that's kind of what the envelope is doing to the filter. Why does that say cutoff A, B? It, it doesn't mean that we're modulating both filter B and filter A. It means we're modulating filter control cutoff. That's just what Silent calls that particular cutoff knob. Um, yeah, and, you know, we've got the noise coming through as well, and turn down the mix so that we don't hear the noise when the filter is down, like that, because that sucks. Um... Yeah, overall, I feel like this is a pretty easy to understand tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment, um, and I'll do my best to, to help out. I hope this was helpful, and um, I love you very, very much. Take care.